and Cherry. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to our church family and happy Sabbath to those of you watching online. Welcome to the Bucks County Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, in your bulletin is something about a single parenting workshop and kids are invited. So please take a look at that. It is the 17th of this month of July. And I don't know, I thought the topics looked pretty interesting. Um, and then next week, next Sabbath, July 9th, we are having a potluck after the service, so please plan on staying in fellowship with, in, with us and uh, let us you know, spend some time together, bring a dish to, dish to share. And after that at two o'clock, there will be a ministry leaders meeting. So if you are the leader of a ministry in this church, please come on out to that. We, uh, have some ideas and we would like some ideas from you as well all right will everyone please stand for our opening song praise god praise god from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Father, majestic is your name. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is to be praised. Merciful God, glorious God, hear us in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. For he has promised that where two or three of us are gathered together in your name, he will be here with us and our prayers will be heard. Hear us, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus. For he is the revelation of your wisdom, the outpouring of your glory, and the incarnation of your mercy toward us. To you be the glory, all praise, and honor, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Savior all the day long. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Amen. I see the works of your hands A galaxy spinning, a heavenly dance Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming I hear the sound of your voice All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise Oh God all that you are is so overwhelming I delight myself in you Captivated by your beauty I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you God, I run into your arms Unashamed because of mercy I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed by you I know the power of your cross Forgiven and free Forever you'll be my God and all that you've done is so overwhelming I delight myself in you And the glory of your presence I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you God, I run into your arms Unashamed because of mercy I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you You are beautiful, you are beautiful Oh God, there is no one more beautiful You are beautiful God, you are the most beautiful. 
You are wonderful, you are wonderful, oh God, there is no one more wonderful. You are wonderful, God, you are the most wonderful. You are glorious, you are glorious, oh God, there is no one more glorious. You are glorious, God, you are the most glorious. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. God, I run into your arms Unashamed because of mercy I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you Happy Sabbath, church family. Happy Sabbath. I don't know about you guys, but it's been a wonderful, beautiful, trying month of June. Um, so anyone who is able to kneel and go before God, let's go before God and present our petitions, but also to thank, thank him for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right? Amen. <laughs> let's pray. Infinite, loving Father. We are gathered here today as your church, O oh Lord, looking for your love, wanting to thank you, looking at how wonderful you have been with us, Lord. Looking at you, Father, who created this day, you who created us, you are the creator of all, and there is no one like you, Heavenly Father. For you are gracious, you are loving, you are wonderful, you are good, you are merciful, and most of all, Father, you love us, and we thank you so much for that love. And Father, we are overwhelmed by your presence, Lord, by your goodness that you have shown us throughout our whole lives, this week even, Lord. And even though we don't see, Lord, at the moment, we know that you are with us, for you have promised that you will never abandon us. Heavenly Father, our hearts may not be right at all, at all at this moment, Lord. And we ask for forgiveness of our sins. We come before you, Lord, because you promised a new heart and a new spirit you will put in us, a heart of flesh. We ask that you remove this stony heart from us, O oh Lord, and that you may replace it with the one that you promised. Heavenly Father, May you cause us to walk in your ways. May we decrease our selfishness, O oh Lord, for you are the one who can do that for us. May you be the one enlarged in our hearts. Father, take our hearts, for they are wholly yours. Use us today for your service, Heavenly Father, as we come to your feet, O oh Lord. May you cleanse us, transform us, change us, and may your Holy Spirit put in us that new heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the many blessings that we have received this week, for your care. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the clouds, the rain. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this church. We thank you for giving your Son, your only Son, your beloved son on that cross to die for our sins, even though we didn't deserve it, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you have provided a way out for us. You have given us a chance, Lord. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for the trials that we have faced this week, because we can see your hand in the miracle, Father. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to come here as your church as we humbly bow down before you, Father, 
we give thanks for you are God and you are our king Heavenly Father we come now humbly asking for those O oh Lord who may have been experiencing sickness this week who may have been experiencing anxiety this week those who have experienced depression maybe this week Lord those who need of your love today father my God we bring to you O oh Lord we lift up their souls to you that your peace and your comfort may be with them Lord through this difficult time we pray father for those who are asking for healing for Caitlin for my dear brother Ramon and his family Lord for Jalissa we pray father for for Elsie for Renee for Cindy for Kathleen Aspen and Chandel and Christabel and Tyler and Terry and the Rachel family we pray Heavenly Father that whatever this situation may be we know Lord that it is not bigger than you and father we pray that you may be the one to cause healing in their lives. Father, bring your healing powers to them, O oh Lord. And above all, Lord, grant them the grace to accept however it is that you will heal them, Father, and to accept your will. Heavenly Father, I also pray, Lord, this morning for, for, the, for the HVCA school for your school father i pray heavenly god that you may be the one to minister in that school heavenly father i pray that the leaders oh lord may be able to be guided by you by your wisdom by your strength give them a portion of your holy spirit lord that they may be able to be the leaders that you have called them and chosen them to be lord heavenly father i pray that the children may receive a great blessing lord Oh, Father, that they may know your name, not depart from you, O oh Lord, but as they keep growing in you, may they remember the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you know all of our needs. We put all of our worries into your hands because you know we know that you are the God who does not leave us. We know that you are the God who performs miracles. We know that you are the one who does wonderful things. Your word says so, Lord. Your word said it. And Father, today we believe that. Lord, I pray, Father, that we know that you have not forgotten about Ukraine and the war that's going on. We know that you have not forgotten this country. And we know, Lord, that your Holy Spirit has not been <laughs> removed, Father. And therefore, we pray that you may bring peace, protection, and joy to those who are suffering today. Father, we humbly ask that you may protect the lives of the civilians, the soldiers who have given their lives to protect their country. Father, we thank you for their sacrifice. And Lord, we pray, Father, that this community, this church, may be able to be blessed greatly, Lord, to help others, to love one another, to give to one another all that we have, Father, as you have called us to do. Father, may you turn our hearts to you, O oh Lord. Father, may you give each person here a portion of your spirit today that we may all be changed according to what you want us to change father be with our speaker denise today our wonderful speaker lord we know that you love her we know that your holy spirit is with her father abide with her as she speaks lord Amen. give her your words and father that we as a church may be able to take those words apply them to our lives lord and share it with others in this community who might be suffering, who might be needing to listen to a word of encouragement and to and know that Jesus loves them and wants them. Father, may you draw our hearts closer and closer, closer to you. 
Draw us near to you, Lord. Father, we thank you and we pray, O oh Lord, all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. Okay, now it's time for the children's story. So if we could get the children to go to the back and collect the baskets so we can collect the funds for Worthy Student Fund, which goes to HVCA and then we will meet you here. You guys can sit right here up front and Sister Faith is going to have the story for you. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you a story today about a dog and a girl. It's a true story, by the way. So this girl was, I'm thinking about your age, maybe like nine or ten years old, and she loved dogs. Any of you like dogs here? I love dogs, too. So she wanted a dog, but she didn't have one at that time, and she used to play with her neighbor's dogs. So one day in the mail, a flyer came in the mail from the local SPCA, and that's where they had dogs that were given back. So she got really excited, she read the ad, and she showed her parents. She said, look, Mom, Dad, look, there's an ad here. We can go get a free dog. Not only was the dog free, but the food was free, mm -hmm. and a bed was free. So she was like, we have everything for a dog. So she put the flyer on the refrigerator and was waiting for that day to come around. It was on a Sunday. So she had a brother who thought, a dog? I want a pit bull. The dad wanted a dog. He wanted a, a husky. She wanted a little dog that she could pet and cuddle, and so did her sister. And her mom didn't want a dog at all. <laughs> <laughs> so the family piled into the van that they had, and they went to the local SPCA. And so everybody walked around looking together. First they saw these big dogs. Then they saw these mean dogs. And all of a sudden they came to this cage with this dog just barking and barking like crazy. And the little girl said, that's the dog I want. Their eyes met and she saw her forever friend. <laughs> so her family was like, okay, he looks all right. The lady at the shelter says, all you need to feed him is some spaghetti and meatballs and he could fatten up because he was really skinny. 
So the family agreed. They took the dog home, and she was in love. Everybody liked the dog, and they trained the dog to do tricks, um, go to bed, go outside, go on walks. She, that was her responsibility until one day she opened the front door and the dog ran out the door. She called the dog. She named him Snoopy. She goes, Snoopy, Snoopy. Snoopy would not come back. Snoopy just ran out, met, met neighbors, interacted with other kids and just running around and crazy and she got so upset. She was so embarrassed because Snoopy wouldn't listen to her. So she just said, God, I hate this dog. I wish I never had this dog. I wish he could just go back. And she just sat and thought and thought and thought. And so the reason why I'm telling you this story is because in the Bible, in James 1.17, it says, Whatsoever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all things. Light in the heavens. So, have any of you ever got a gift from God that you changed your mind about? Anybody? Anybody got a cat and they said, maybe not? Or a scooter they didn't like? Well, we tend to do that as human beings, but you have to remind yourself, every time you ask for something and God says, okay, and put his seal on it, he is giving you something from him. All right, can I have someone to pray, please? Buddy? Well, let's bow our heads. Oh, okay, great. I got a volunteer. Wonderful. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us live another day and be able to come here together. Thank you for letting us have a good children's story and a good start to our Sabbath. Please help everyone get home safely and have a good rest of their Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. offering will be going to the church local budget. <coughs> and I want to share with you guys the scripture in Proverbs 9, I'm sorry, Proverbs 3, verses 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and the vats will brim over with new wine. So when we tithe, just to give a little short explanation, um, God asks us to give 10% of our income back to him, right? And that goes to the conference, which goes to basically fund the global proclamation of God's word to the rest of the world, right? That also goes to fund um, conference-led projects and also for our pastors. Local budget actually stays here. So that money goes to cover church expenses. Um, and it also funds our ministries here at the church and because these are expenses that are monthly expenses, it is usually asked that we give about 5%. But you can, use, you can give from your heart, you can give what you want, or you can give the 5%, right? Um, I have to say personally, when I first started tithing a long time ago, I did not give my 5% to the local church budget. I, and I have to be honest, but once I started doing that, I noticed that while God always provided and was there for me with the 10% that I gave, I noticed more increase in my life, not just with funds, but just in general, when I started giving the 5% to help support my church. So it is needed for the church. Um, we have a lot of ministries here that uh, we do here to also proclaim the word of God around the world, obviously more locally. So please give from your heart and I also just wanted to remind you that we are supposed to put God first, right, in everything that we do. Because if we don't, then other things will take the place of God. And then that's not good for us. So we have to always have God first and in our hearts. And I'll leave you with this, because it's not just with tithing where we give God and put him first, but in general in our lives. 
and in Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And a quick reminder, our envelopes are here. For those of you online, you can give online. That's how I personally do it. I give my tithe and offering online. Um, so there are both ways that you can do it. Now, if the ushers could please stand. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you have given us, Lord. And I thank you so much that you always provide for us, that you're always giving to us, Lord, not just with funds, Lord, but you are just there for us with the love that you give us, with the mercy that you give us, which you give to us generously. Lord, I ask right now that as we are giving back to you, may our hearts be open to give to you generously too, just as you give to us, Lord. And may this be more like also like a thank you. Thank you because you provide for us. Now this is our gratitude back to you in giving. And I ask that you can be with every single individual here, those of who are watching online, those who are not here as well, Lord. Please be with us for the rest of the Sabbath, for the rest of our lives, Lord. Just be by our side. And we ask all this in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. singing over me You have been so so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so so kind to me and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 oh I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God When I was your foe, still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me and oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. Oh, I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no 
wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leave the night. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, it's time for the scripture reading. Let's all turn our Bibles to Matthew 21, 18 through to 19. Matthew 21, 18 through to 19. Now in the morning, as he, as he returned to the city, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing but leaves, and he said, to it, let no fruit grows on it ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. May the Lord add His blessings upon the lesson. Amen. Sorry for you folks that are watching. I was just telling the telling Terry and Scott that I don't like the lag. And then I did it. So forgive me, Lord, for being judgmental. All right. Um, I'm just not going to have time to waggle this thing around my ear. So I'm going to grab that microphone over there. There we go. Are we on? Are we on? There we are. I'm sorry. That thing takes like, with this hair, it just takes a little paying attention. All right. So good to be with all of you. Thank you so much for including me in the music today. Just a total blessing. Hey, is that Scott's mom? Nice. All right. Let's just bow our heads and have a prayer for one more moment. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for <clears throat> the freedom we have to worship here today for the beautiful sunshine outside, for the blessings of this church family. And so all of their efforts, Lord, their commitments, their meetings, their focus, their prayers, their familial ties, I pray that you would just bless them above and beyond all that they could ask or think. For they open their doors and their hearts to me all the time, and it's such a gift. And so I pray that you would give that gift to everyone in this neighborhood, in this county, in this state. I ask you in Jesus' name, amen. All right. So it would be great if I could see my stuff in these monitors. Is that possible? Not urgent, but just great. So if you can't do it, it's fine. All right. Our story this morning is told by three of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and we're going to uh, throw in, I should say, we're going to say that the story was told by two of the gospel writers, and we're going to throw in an aside uh, from the book of Luke um, as we unpack this story this morning. Now, remember that it's always important to me that we know where we are 
when we're talking about um, the story uh, that we're telling this morning. And so Jesus has already come through New Jericho. For you Bible students, you know there's a difference between New Testament Jericho and Old Testament Jericho. And so I think we've done this sermon here about blind Bartimaeus and his pal. And so that's what's happened just previous to this. He's come through New Jericho. He's healed blind Bart and his pal. And he, it's kind of a fun story. If we haven't done it, I'll make sure that we do it sometime this year. You know, he's coming through and he is walking through and everybody had been planning that the fancy dusty rabbi was going to hang out in some of the fancy places because new testament jericho was built by herod it was a very fancy place and he just walked right on through town he healed the people who asked to be healed which were blind bart and his friend and he walked out the back gate and as he was leaving town some guy in a tree do you remember that guy Okay, Zacchaeus, that's how he met Zacchaeus. He was headed straight out the back gate of New Jericho and Zacchaeus was like, Lord! And so he did stay and hang out with the fancy people during that trip. Um, he went to Zacchaeus' house um, and that is, the, um, that is the precursor to the story that we're going to look at today. And the story that we're going to talk about today is wrapped in a story that you know very well. And the wrapping is that Jesus approached Jerusalem. This is the end. Okay, this is the last part. Uh, this is Sunday he came to Bethany. And Monday he looked down over uh, the holy city and he came in. How did he come in, friends? He came in on a colt. And what were they shouting? Hosanna to the son of David. This was his triumphal entry into the city. And so he came into the city, and you know that I always like to share with you that it's nobody's fault, but so many times when we have beautiful artistic or graphic presentations around biblical stories, there just aren't enough people in the picture. So here's enough people in the picture. Okay, this is a 2018, this is taking April 2, 2018 at the Western Wall. Same season, same celebration. So if you want to get some idea of, um, I mean, of course you're going to tell me that the population was different, and yes it was, but I want you to understand how many people thronged into Jerusalem during this time of year. So it would have been a very cramped, very crowded, very busy time when Jesus made this procession into Jerusalem. And they were waving palm branches, and they were laying their cloaks on the ground, and they were saying, Hosanna to the son of, Z son of David. And this would have been a reference and something that would have resonated in their hearts from the book of Ze Zechariah. And what, is the what are the first two words here, friends? Okay, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, what does it say? Your king is coming to us, righteous and having salvation. Is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey? That's kind of a fun story. We'll have to unpack it sometime about when he told his pals to go find him this donkey. It was a very interesting story. And so he sat astride this young donkey and he marched into Jerusalem. And it says, rejoice. And it says, shout. So Jesus was happy, right? What does the text say? He wept over it. So imagine the contrast. Sometimes I think it's one of the most beautiful things about the Bible is to be able to step into the heart of God itself to feel what Jesus felt in that moment, and that's what we're going to try to do for just our few minutes together. He was weeping over the city. So tell me how the disciples felt about this processional. How, say it again. Thank you. Say it again. Finally. They tried to make him king when he fed the 5,000. They tried to, you know, wonder whether or not they were going to gather an army and the Romans were going to hightail it out of town. Okay, and so finally, it's about time. And so imagine the difference between their feelings 
and the difference between the feelings of the crowd and step into the heart of Jesus himself because he's weeping. And I'm thinking they're finding this a little uncomfortable and they're going to get more uncomfortable as we go on. Now, if you want to get into the heart of God, there's a beautiful way to do it. You can open the book of Jeremiah. So let's open the book of Jeremiah in chapter 9, and it says, Oh, that my head were what, friends? Were waters, and my eyes were a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. This is our Jesus in this moment, in this very difficult moment. And it's interesting that even till today, we call it the triumphal entry. So you ready to make a left-hand turn into the book of Luke? Because it'll help us with our story today. Buckle up. Here we go. All right, so Luke chapter 13. Who's telling the story? Okay, different time, different place. You with me? All right, Jesus told this story. A man, once upon a time, a man had a what? A fig tree. Does anybody in here have a fig tree? (gasps) Get out of Dodge, you have a fig tree. Nice. All right, all right. A man had a fig tree. There's the man right there. Okay, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Do you have one of those? You took it (laughs) The spotted lanternfly made you take it down, right? Okay. He had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for some fruit on the tree, but what? (gasps) How's your fig tree? All right. All right. We're going to talk about that time thing. All right. He found nothing. All right. So one of my favorite artists, James Tussaud, he did the first um, artwork that we did on the, the triumphal entry. He's looking for what, friends? What's he looking for? Fruit. He's looking for figs, fruit. All right? They generally begin to ripen sometime between three and five years after planting. So you have to be patient with these trees. Finally, he says to his gardener, wish I had a gardener. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited how long? Now say it like he said it. Three years. years. I've waited three years, and there hasn't been a what, friends? Not nothing, not a zip, a single fig. What are the next three words? You know what my prayer is for us today? That we can stay inside this whole story. You with me? Let's stay inside the story. Let's let the spirit run riot inside of us today. Are you in? Because that has to count me, too. And i got to, you know, please be merciful. All right, here we go. I've waited three years, and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The Lord of light and glory had gone in and out among his people. He went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. He bound up the brokenhearted. He set at liberty those who were in change. Chains. He restored sight to Blind Bar and a bunch of other people, I'm sure. He caused the lame to walk and the deaf to hear. He cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He preached the gospel to the poor. That's almost there, brothers. Oh, there we go. He's got the text up. Sorry, confused me. All right. He preached the gospel to the poor. Come unto me, he said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? How long? Did he do all of that? Three years. Back to the story. Sir, the gardener's like, "Uh, uh, uh, you serious? He's like, sir, leave it alone. For what? Give it one more year, my brother. Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it, and I'll do what? And I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, when? Next year, fine. And if not, then what? I'll cut it down. All right, back to Jeremiah, friends. If you do not listen, back to the heart of Christ. If you do not listen, I will weep in secret because of your what? 
because of your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly, overflowing with tears, because the Lord's flock will, not might be, will be what? Taken captive. Taken captive. Jesus is weeping. He has his entry, and he heads back to a place of refuge. And it was hilly country heading back from Jerusalem to the little village where he liked to find rest. And what was the name of that village? Bethany. This little hamlet where he liked to lay his head, where the city is overflowing with multitudes and multitudes of people. People are taking every hotel, motel, six there is to have, and they are camping in tents outside on the hills. I'm sure he had to pass some of them on his way to Bethany. But friends, he needs sustenance. He needs rest because this is the road to Calvary. That's where we are in his life. All right, so back to Matthew and Mark who tell the story together. He's gone back to Bethany. And the story picks up in Matthew 21. Now, what does it say? What was the time of day? Early. Early in the morning, as Jesus was coming back to the city. What city is that? Jerusalem. Okay, so he's going back from Bethany to Jerusalem. What's the next three words? All right, now, students of Jesus, why was he hungry? Look, he's so verbal today. It's wonderful. You guys got to you guys got to get on board here. All right? He'd been what? Praying how long? All night. And so Martha's like, "Man, you must be hungry." You know, and you know Martha, she doesn't serve any like seriously low breakfast. Okay, this is Martha. That's who lives in Bethany. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. That's where he lays his head. And she's like, you know, can I tempt you with something? You know, you look like you need a little sustenance. And what was his answer? No. And he heads to the city. Because he's got a craving, friends. A craving that I used to have when I was a girl. How about you? Did you crave these? I still eat these. They're so messy. You know, like you have to have something to clean it up after you're done, but they're great. What are they called? Big Newtons. Okay? Lois's. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, Jesus has a craving this morning. And having seen, he's heading to where? Jerusalem. Having seen a certain fig tree on the way, he remembered it from the day before, he came to it and found what? Except... Nothing except leaves. Now, here's one of those lovely conundrum texts, but I think we're going to unconundrum it before we're done. All right, there were only leaves because it was what? It was too early in the season for. Okay, that's a broad statement, difficult to understand. Some translations say it this way before the time of the fully ripe figs. And we're going to learn that that means something. All right, so here's a picture of a fig tree outside of Jerusalem from National Geographic from 1915. So, you know, we'll get some idea of the scope and scale of Jesus' expectation. These were trees that teachers used to teach under, uh, spiritual classes, educational classes. You could find respite from the sun, of course, in the last you know, few beautiful days that we've had, and today included, we could use one. And Jesus is walking and circling around this fig tree, and he's looking for fruit. But what I want to suggest to you so that the text makes sense is that he's not looking for this. This is what you think of when you think of a fig, right? Okay? He's looking for early fruit. What they call a breba fig. B-R-E-B-A. A breba fig. That's what he's looking for. And they say that they're not as sweet as the regular figs, but we're about to find out from a couple of texts that I think Jesus actually preferred them. All right, so figs have two crops a year, depending on the, the conditions. Some of the crop grows off of the wood from the flowers from the previous year, and then some of the crop grows off the tendrils, the green, 
So some crop grows off the bark and some crop grows off the green. Does that make sense? All right, so here you go. Here's what it looks like growing off the bark. And here's one where they're both there. You see it? Okay, so you've got breba figs and you've got ripe figs. Some are growing off the bark and some are growing off the green tendrils. And so Jesus is looking for the early figs based on what? What is he looking for the figs based upon? That's a poor, poorly set up sentence, but you know what I'm saying. What makes him think that there's fruit on this tree? Say it again. Okay, so the time of season, there's a seasonal expectation, but there's also something about the tree that makes him think it should have breba figs on it. What is it? The leaves. It's leafy. And this tree has this, this cycle, this life cycle of this beautiful tree. What he's really looking for is the precursor to something sweet. He's looking for the precursor. He's looking for the the tree to do what it's supposed to do. This is what the tree is supposed to do. So friends, I want you to understand that this is such a beautiful story because for me, it's an opportunity to step into a very personal conversation between the father and the son. Because I'm just not sure that even though I think Jesus was praying all night and at this point fasting, whether or not this was the plan for the day, You'll see what's about to happen, if you remember what's about to happen. For me, this is a very intimate moment. He's on the road to Calvary. He's walking through the last week of his life, and he just wanted some breakfast. And there wasn't anything. And so what I'd like to suggest to you is the powerful, intimate moment that this story unpacks is available to every single one of you here especially in the times that we live in, especially when things happen that are unexpected. You can have this kind of conversation, this kind of power in your life, because if you are like anything, if you're walking the road, anything like the road I'm walking, I surely can use it. Back to Micah. You want to look into Jesus' heart? Open Micah. How what? How miserable I am. I feel like the fruit picker after the harvest who can find what? Nothing to eat. You could sit on that sentence all day and all week, could you not? To step into the heart of God where he says that I feel like the one who's picked fruit all day and there's nothing to eat. Not a cluster of grapes, not a single what? Isn't that interesting? Not a single early fig can be found to satisfy my hunger. And this is why I think they were Jesus' favorite, because Micah said so. He said, none of the early figs that I want, that I love. Off to Hosea. When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the desert. Think about the sweetest most wonderful burst on your tongue grape you've ever eaten. You know that snap? You know when you first hit it with your teeth and it just busts open on your tongue. It's like finding grapes in the desert, he says. And when I saw your ancestors, it was like seeing what? Early figs. Early fruit on the fig tree. But then unfortunately, Hosea goes on to talk about Baal Peor. It was a local deity worshipped by the Moabites. And when the Israelites following Moses to the promised land were in the vicinity of Peor, some of them fell into idolatry and worshipped Baal Peor. So Jesus is looking for a fruitful nation. And they fall again into idolatry. And the picture is up here because one of the dear sweet fellows took a spear and actually put it through two people who were defiling themselves right on the steps of their worship. They consecrated themselves to that shameful idol and became as vile as the thing they loved. 
Jesus was a powerful student, of course, of the word that the Spirit inspired. And so I imagine that there's just dozens and dozens of things going through his heart and mind. He had worked so hard for three years. And look at it. It looks beautiful. It's so green. It provides shade. It looks like it should be doing everything it's supposed to be doing. But a good, a bad tree cannot, what friends? It can't bear good fruit. All right. So Jesus said to the tree, now, I don't think he yelled at it because the, the, the disciples don't say anything about it until later. And so, again, I think this is a deeply difficult, personal, covenant, father, son, this is it moment. And he said to the tree, say it again. You say it. I want to hear you say it. Jesus didn't say stuff like that a lot, right? May no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it, and he keeps moving. And the next thing that he does, friends, is to move his way into the temple for the second time. And what does he do? He drives them out. Who does he drive out? The profiteers. Because you know where the profiteers were set up? You notice that it didn't work the first time that he did it. It's all back where it was before, the pens of animals and the money changers tables and all of the cacophony and all of it going on. You know where they did it? In the court of the Gentiles. Which means that if you were poor or you were a non-Jew and you wanted to partake in what was going on during this beautiful season of worship, you couldn't because there was no room for you because the high priest was lining his pockets. And so Jesus threw them out, and he let everybody else in. And whenever I think about this period of his life, I think about when he was a child. Do you remember when he got away from his parents for a little while? And where did they find him? doing his father's business in the temple. And such it was this day, just like when he was a boy. And then he goes back to Bethany, to the place that he feels safe, to the people that feel like family. And the next morning, drum roll please, and the next morning as they were passing by, Apparently, he didn't even stop. He's just like, you know, headed back in. He's got plenty to do. It's the last week of his life. In the morning, as they were passing by, the disciples saw that the fig tree had what? How, how, how completely was this tree withered away, friends? From the roots up. Peter remembered the tree. Leave it to Peter. I'm very like Peter. Just let the first thing come out of your mouth that comes into your head. Peter remembered the tree and said, Teacher, look! The tree you cursed is dry and dead. And so it went from this to this. So imagine the difference if you had walked by. And imagine... Imagine their thought about it. Imagine their eyeballs and their body language and imagine what they thought about it. Because friends, this was a little astonishing. Unlike the way that he usually worked. He touched the leper, the unclean one. And so as you walk by this tree, you're going, really? He killed something. I've never seen him do that. I mean, this is the guy who, like, climbed down into, the last time we were together, we talked about 
the man at the pool of Bethesda who probably, it was probably really difficult to stay in there without a handkerchief over your nose. Thus was Jesus. The scriptures say the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to what? And yet he killed this tree. But friends, I want us to think about ourselves and I want us to think about our country when I say that when we flaunt our pretentious foliage in the face of Christ, that's a problem. Are you with me? He desires us to make plain who he is. And in this city in particular, this city was set very literally as a light on a hill. And so are you. And so am I. That's our job. So listen. Listen for our own hearts, for our own nation, not just for the one that is reported here. As he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is what? It's too late. And peace is hidden from your eyes. Not because God didn't want them to have it. Are we clear? It's because they have been so seduced that they no longer know the difference between the truth and what? And a lie. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. He said, come unto me. And they said, no. And thus it was. Dead from the roots. Dead from the roots. Friends, let it not be so with us. We're the only piece of our nation that we can do anything about. And so together, let it not be so with us. If people see leaves on our tree, then let there be fruit. And if you're feeling dry and raisined up today, <laughs> then let's go home and pray about it. And let's repent. That's one of my prayers this week. Lord, how do I know the difference between I'm sorry about how this turned out and I repent? We can't plan and study to please ourselves. We have to plan and study for the service of others. Unselfish service. Costly service. We must have something to give others that will nourish them, that is sweet on their tongue. And considering what's happening in America, it shouldn't be hard to tell the difference. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. But what does it say? You wouldn't. So friends, all I want us to remember about this is that this happened. The barrier to the masses was the church. And that cannot be us. It cannot be us. Jesus turned his back and he walked away. And what was coming to that city, they could not imagine. And it was going to happen within a generation. Do you remember this picture that I showed you earlier? This temple was actually built by a farmer in England with his own two hands over many, many years. It's quite beautiful. His daughter has it in a barn, and I'm praying that someday they'll take it out of the barn so that when you and I go to London, we can go and look at it. So meticulously put together. But friends, the problem is that it's just an imitation. We can't be just an imitation. So as we think about landing our plane today. You see there's a human in this picture? 
You squint, you can see human in this picture. <laughs> this is the kind of tree that Jesus wants us to be. Massive, fruitful, giving shade and shelter to those that need it. Because if we can't get there, the instructions are clear. Jesus will not tolerate should we have no root, no shoot, no fruit. That's not who we're called to be. And so I like this picture because you've got it all. It looks very inviting, doesn't it? And I'm a fan of avocado, so not a problem. Remember that in Adam and Eve's rebellion, we're just going to note here that they wrap themselves in fig leaves to try to cover up what could not be covered up. And so it happened, friends. The tree that was Jerusalem, that was national Israel, it was cut down. But I want us to remember something, that someone was left alone to face the fury of the realities that that could not be averted. And that was Jesus, was it not? Left alone to face the fury. The Bible says they all left him and what? fled. And I want to say with praise on my lips, even though this is a very heavy concept that we're talking about, is that all of humanity came down on that terrible day to one man, to the last Adam. And what I'd like to suggest to you is that the tree that was cut down that day was replanted, replanted by the wood that took him to his death and that Adam and all the promises that came to humanity through Adam and Eve of course that unlimited promise that humanity was created with this this capacity to forever climb higher to forever grow that's why God created us and then of course the enemy came along and when you see mothers weeping and burying their sons on the evening news in Ukraine Jesus knows because he's been weeping every day to see us restored, to see us have roots and shoots and fruit. And friends, I want you to know that from that stump, the promise that he gave to us came to life. Isaiah says it. There shall come forth a what? a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall do what, friends? Humanity rose again when Jesus came out of that tomb. And what he did was become what we have to understand is a shadow of the ending. He became the remnant right there on Calvary's Hill, the last part of the promise for humanity right there on Calvary's Hill. And then at his feet, that enlargement of the remnant started. The people who came to be with him when he died, the people who came to his tomb on and on until he built his church, you and I. And so even though the fig tree was cut down, Jesus planted something that day, that day on Golgotha's hill. And it wavers back and forth between the great hordes of wonderful Christians across the globe, right down to you in your time of devotion. You are the remnant in partnership with the rest of those who claim his name. Now it's July 2. It's a little challenging to be an American right now. But I'm not an American first. I'm glad to be, but I'm not an American first. I'm a Christian first. And on this weekend of the celebration of Independence Day, as we close, I want to remind you that we must learn to be completely dependent. We don't want to find ourselves outside 
of that place of fruitfulness that Jesus was talking about. In the halls of power in our country, they're trying to argue about this and that and talk about what the economy's going to look like. We don't know what the economy's going to look like. And Jesus, if we do everything that our sister was talking about, is gonna take care of us, bless our money, help us know when to put it there and when to take it out, and he's got it. So what I'm gonna offer to you as we close is this crazy story. You remember Jacob? You know, I'm a massage therapist. I meet a few wrestlers across my career. Do you remember that story of wrestling? He wrestled in prayer for the deliverance from the hand of Esau. And here's what I want to leave us with on this 4th of July weekend so should the followers of Christ as they approach the time of what, friends? Already started. Everybody clear? Already started. As they approach the time of trouble, they should make every just like Jacob what? Exertion. Think of that wrestling match, friends. That was a long night of exertion. I love words that sound like what they mean exertion to place themselves in a what a proper light before who who are the people hey you know your family let's start with your family let's start with your fellow church members let's talk about the people you work with let's talk about the gal at the grocery store yesterday i went to a restaurant yes i did i was wearing my mask i said could you please seat me in a corner and so they sat me way back in the back which is where i like to sit during the pandemic and so i sat in the back and this girl was the sweetest thing on earth when you live by yourself when people bring you warm food it's a nice thing She was so kind. So we chatted and, you know, chewed the fat. Not really, but you know what I'm saying? Those people, the people at the bank, the people everywhere, place themselves in a proper light before the people. All right, are you ready for your assignment? You ready? You're like, hurry up, Denise, I'm hungry. You ready? What does it say? Woo! How's America doing with that one? This is our assignment, friends, this 4th of July weekend, to be completely dependent, to exert, exert, exert everything we have, to disarm prejudice, because we're having a little trouble with that, don't you think? We're having a little trouble with that. So when you're tempted to get caught up, I work with a gal who is on the politically opposite side of me, like way over on the other side, and we have promised one another that we will keep talking. We will just keep talking, and we will just keep, you know, enjoying one another's company, and we will keep trying to, you know, uphold one another as Christians. All right, so what's your first assignment? Disarm prejudice. That was very, very passionate. Thank you very much. Let's try it again. Very good. All right, now here it is. It's not over. You ready? Go. We have no time to get sucked in to the seductive narrative, no matter where it's coming from. Are you with me? That is not our assignment. This is our assignment, to avert the danger. Keep doors and hearts open as long as we can. Because the person who wants to step into that void is who? Jesus himself. So this 4th of July weekend, make sure that you're making some time for prayer. Prayer for this assignment, prayer for our country, because we certainly need it, and prayer that God will make us people who bear fruit. Okay? All right. Now, gentlemen, ladies, whomever's up there, please put my song in the machine. Yeah,
pushing the buttons. And if it won't play, it's all right. We'll go straight to the end song. Is it gonna play? doing This Is Amazing Grace then. Yeah. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory. The King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth With holy thunder Who leaves us breathless In awe and wonder The King of glory The King above all kings This is amazing grace this is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King above all kings With truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
Father in heaven, there is nothing that can describe your grace except something akin to amazing. So as we meditate on these things, trouble was coming to Jerusalem, and trouble is coming to America. And so let us not be afraid. Let us be smart and humble and ready. Ready to say, I've read about it all my life. And now I want to be the kind of person who can be a light on a hill. We can't do that without you. We can do nothing without you. So let us have all that you desire. Let us have deep roots and green shoots and abundant fruit for your glory, for others, for your kingdom. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Can you do that again? Hmm? Can we do that again just to wake up some noise? We could. <laughs> no problem. Should we do it again? Or? We should do something. Uh, let's do. Oh, there we go. They saved us. <laughs>